So before we get into opening this up and looking at all the different parts and the tools you're going to need to do this installation, we should talk a little bit about which kayaks the track gear is appropriate for. Lots of different boats have track aft of the seat uh, that you can use. Not all that track is created equal. Uh, companies like Bonafide and Native and Innovative Sportsman here have made track that can withstand the upward force of the weight of the boat and all the gear that you're going to put on it. Certain boats you can do this installation that don't have track back there or maybe that have plastic track if you replace it with metal track and have the appropriate hardware to withstand the forces required for landing gear use. Because this inflatable has track available immediately after the seat, this is going to be a very easy installation. Alright, I've laid out all the different parts that come with the landing gear track kit. Obviously we have our wheels. These are the legs uh, that the wheels go on. The square end of the leg goes into the knuckle like that when it's stowed and then there's a different position when it's, it's actually deployed. We'll set that aside and uh, take a look at well, let's take a look at the knuckle because we're getting ready to assemble all of this. You have the T-bolt, which is going to go into your track. And then you have a flat washer, a split washer, and then that nut, which secure the single hole part of it to the track. The part that has the two holes goes into the side of the knuckle like that. It's actually gonna sort of sandwich it like that, like bookends. The hardware for that is here, uh, which is basically, let me show you these. The track nut will slide into the side. You're actually going to do two of those. Then this goes over it. And then you have enough sets of this hardware, which is basically the pan head with the, the Allen hole there, flat washer and split washer to secure that. One of the most important things of all of this is using the Loctite that you're given. Loctite everything. The next thing that we're gonna put together, once you have two of these, you have this spacer bar. That's gonna go in, it's just gonna slide in like, like that. And uh, we're going to have to cut this to the right length that you need for the width of your boat. Once you have the right length of the spacer bar cut, you're going to use these tiny little, don't lose them, set screws with plenty of Loctite. Just squish a little bit of that blue goo all the way around. And uh, I'll go ahead and insert it. We got four of these to do. Next, we have the components needed to create the bungee. The bungee hooks from one D ring, and you get four of these, these clips that basically go in this part of the. Uh, the leg that also bookends where the wheel goes on. The wheel's going to go on like that. So 
So that's the purpose of the these clips here is to secure the wheel on the bottom of the leg. Once you have two of those, when this is in the stow function, you need the bungee to hook from one side to the other to make sure that this whole assembly doesn't rattle loose when you're driving down the road. So here are the tools you're going to need. Uh, you'll need an Allen key set. Uh, this one is one eighth and it's for these tiny little little set screws. Don't forget the Loctite. The next size Allen is a 532nd. That's for the rest of your hardware. You're going to need a set of ratcheting wrenches. They don't have to be ratcheting. If you got a regular box wrench or, or even a socket set, it'll work. I just prefer this guy right here, and that's a 7 16th. You're going to need a hacksaw and a Sharpie marker to mark the correct length that you're going to cut the spacer bar for the width of your kayak. The first step we're going to do is to take these pieces, they're called the gussets, and they're going to bookend onto the knuckles. And I'm losing my track nuts there, but I'm going to need two track nuts on either side so that I have something for the, the hardware that's going to go through there and attach to like that. But before you start, you're going to have to pay attention to where these the holes for these set screws are. You're going to want those on the inside of the kayak. So with the set screws on the inner portion of the kayak, you're going to assemble the gussets on what's going to be the outer portion of the kayak, like that. Now, understand at this stage, you're not really tightening these all the way, and it is not time for the Loctite yet. All we're doing is setting this up to get the spacing right. Okay, that's one side done. Let's go ahead and do the second one. All right, now with two sets of these done, we're gonna lay them across the kayak here with the spacer bar slid across. And we're gonna mark the width that we need as it lays across here. So we're going to use the hacksaw here in a little bit, but for this operation, it's the Sharpie marker that's, uh, that's important. So what we're doing, you can see it's sticking out the side here. I mean, I've just, just laid it on where I want it to go, and I got the knuckles and the gussets. Got the gussets lined up with the track on both sides. and. I got it straight, and now I'm looking inside these little set screw holes, and I'm sliding the spacer bar in, and I'm looking in the end until I'm looking in these little screw holes, these uh, set screw, right, until I can see the opening here. I can see the bar through that hole, but now I see space. I'm gonna slide it back in this direction so that I know that I have some purchase there. 
and uh, that's basically I'm marking with the Sharpie marker on both sides where where the setting is for this and and the set screws will go in there eventually now we come to this side and I'm gonna mark where the holes are for the set screws and just on this side of it is where I'm gonna make my cut all right let me explain this to you again I'm going to take this off, I'm going to take both of these assemblies off. You just have the width here for a set screw to go there and there. I already know on this side that my set screws I've marked are there and there. And now I just need to cut it about there. That's my cut mark. I'll take this back into the shop, put it in the vise and chop off this section and that's going to be specific to this particular boat and the width between the tracks just gonna get some of these burrs off of there Now with the correct length, we're going to slide the spacer bar into the knuckle and we have that mark there to remind us how far in this way it is and thus how much it needs to go in here. If you leave extra length in there, it's going to restrict how far in you can slide these. So you really only want enough length of the spacer bar to reach just to the outside of of this set screw and just to the outside of the other one with this in place we're going to take our t-bolts slide them into the track and uh, and start putting the hardware on there we'll do that on both sides Now this is the part where I do want to break out the Loctite. So I'm just getting enough of a coating all the way around. Let that blue goo soak in to the threads. And then as we put the hardware on, it's going to lock in real good. This is where that ratcheting wrench really earns its keep okay we're going to continue that with all four of the t-bolts then we're going to back out each of these and put loctite on them really hammer on it. Just snug is not good enough. You really want to hammer on it. So now you want to make sure that your spacer bar is in alignment so that all four 
of these threaded holes for the set screws will actually come into contact with the bar. If it's offset and one of them misses it and it's too far in, that's not what you want. You want to make sure that you look through each of these holes and you're hitting metal all the way across. Once you've done that, uh, this is probably the most important time that we're using the Loctite is on these set screws. I like to make sure that I have the Loctite ready and open. And if you put the set screw on there, hold it in place, things just go a little bit easier for you. Angle it up so it doesn't fall off and uh, just squish a little bit of that blue goo all the way around. Yep, that's coated all of the threads there. And uh, I'll go ahead and insert it. We got four of these to do. I can feel it biting into it. I like this particular one because it gives me an extra handle to really get it in there secure. Really smash it and make sure that it's as tight as it can get. Let me get one a little more turn in there. Yep, that's really digging into that bar, making sure that it will not slide from side to side. Three more to go, and then we move on to putting the wheels on and the bungee, and then we're done. So while we're here, might as well take a minute and put the decal on. Let them know it is. A Boondocks original. So I already touched on how we put the wheels on the legs. I've already gone ahead and put one of the D-rings on there. We'll just slide that in place and um, <clears throat> take another one, open it up, and you got the hole on the outside there. Slide that in and uh, do the same for the other side. However, I will recommend if you're going to do any sort of off-roading or, or rough terrain, the ones I prefer, you really want to consider getting the sand tracks. These are much more suited for, uh, for having, you know, variable terrain where this compresses and it really just, it actually makes it easier on you pulling the kayak. It's just always my preference to upgrade to these sand tracks. So at this point, you can go ahead and put your your legs in, and they're ready for uh, for wheeling around. But when you bring it up to the stow position, you're going to need something to kind of tighten them in. Uh, and that's where this bungee comes into play. Let me show you how to put the hooks on the bungee. So you want both ends to look like that at the end, but you're just gonna get a, uh, you know, just the end of the bungee like that. What you're gonna wanna do is take this ring, just a little plastic ring, slide that on there, and just leave it down there. This hook part has an opening. See that opening? You're gonna take the end of the bungee, shove it in there, you might have to give it a little twist, and then I gotta find some pliers, I'll be right back. All right, got my pliers. You're gonna see these two little triangles that stick out to the side. And with this fully seated all the way down, you're gonna take your pliers and just mash those in. That's really gonna have the inside of those triangles bite into the bungee. As soon as you let go of that, you're gonna take this little ring and smush it up underneath it. So, smash the triangles and push the ring up. And you might even use the pliers to kinda help you with that and just compress the ring up into the bottom till it's secure. <clears throat> that ring just keeps it pinching so that, that that hook is not gonna come off now. 
Uh, we're about done. I'll show you hooking these on and then we'll take it for a spin. So the bungee's there to go from one side to the other and really to draw them in because if you don't have them in transport, these start vibrating. You can be driving down the road and all of a sudden one of them's gone. So you can actually cut these different lengths. Uh, I always keep it the length that it comes and I hook to the outside D-ring so it has enough strength. It goes through here and uh, hooks on the D-ring on the other side and then these are really not coming apart. Such a nice easy way to move the boat around. Effortless, totally effortless. And one nice thing about it is it makes putting it in your truck that much easier because you're already at an elevated position with the wheels. But before we finish packing this away we got one more little thing to do. We got to add some accessories right here to this track and the, the center track here. This one's top loading. This one has to slide in the sides, which is easy because, you know, you're not going very far with it. Side arms, lock and load bases, tie down eyelets, cup holders, so much rigging real estate. We're gonna put some Omegas, Omega rod holders. I got an Omega Pro to add to this side. These will be good for camera mounts. So much rigging real estate everywhere. Yep. So much stuff you can do with this track. It's not just a way to transport your kayak. It's track and it's, you know, side to side stability for, for your kayak. Landing gear does so much for you. Thanks for watching.